So you've probably already got yourself the Google Pixel 3a because at $399, why wouldn't you? Or you're thinking of getting yourself the Google Pixel 3a and you're wondering after you set up your email and after you've downloaded a whole bunch of your apps, what else can this baby do? Well, today I'm going to show you 20 plus settings, tips and tricks that you need to have on your Google Pixel 3a to make it even more awesome. Oh, and there are two Easter eggs which are actually hidden inside the software. And I'm going to show you how to get to them as well. They're in the video. Let's go check it out. You never want to miss an opportunity to take a photo. So simply double clicking on the power button will launch the camera. And it even works from a lock screen. FYI, did a whole video on camera. It'll be linked up here as well. So there we go. From a lock screen, double tap on the power and it fire ups the camera. In the camera, go into more, go into settings. And this time we're going to look for gestures. Now, this is what it will do when you play with the volume button. So you can see here I've got options for shutter, zoom, volume, and then actually switch it just off, which basically means it will do nothing. And then the other one is when you double tap on the screen, it can zoom or switch camera or do nothing. I like the zoom. I think that zoom works really, really cool. So let's go. Let's go find something to take a picture of. There's my lovely yellow pen. I tap on the screen and it zooms in. Double tap again and it zooms out. Really, really useful, actually. Right, since we're still in camera mode, let's do something else. You know that wherever you tap on the screen, it's going to focus on that location, and there's the light meter on the right-hand side. But if you're left-handed, you have to jump over that. Well, not anymore. Tap on the screen, and you can see I can long hold anywhere on the screen, up and down, and it'll play with the light meter. And yes, of course, it works on the right-hand side as well, so you don't have to be above the slider. This feature is called at a glance. So long press, choose the home settings, and then choose at a glance. Now at a glance, you'll be able to see your next calendar appointment, your traffic, or any airline reservations that you have. Let me show you what that looks like. So there you see Sunday 19th of May, and there we go, I've just added another meeting coming up and big meeting in 26 minutes. Let me get rid of it. And this is what it looks like back to normal. So we've all been in a location, we've heard a cool tune, sick, rad, beat, oh, I don't know what the kids say these days. We've all heard a cool song, you wanted to know who the artist is or what the song name is. On the Pixel 3a, what you do is you enable something called Now Playing. Essentially that listens out to music, like Shazam did, and it basically tells you the artist. You can enable that, it keeps the history, so you can see and hear which song you actually listen to. And in fact, another cool little hack is click the three little dots, click add to the home screen, automatically add any new tracks as well. And that puts a little icon. When you tap it, it will just list every music that you've actually heard around you. Of course, we can hold our phone in portrait or landscape. When we hold it in landscape, it doesn't rotate the entire screen. Now, some people go and simply enable the auto rotation in the quick drop menu, but that doesn't actually do that because it's only gonna do it within an app like YouTube, for example. But there's a way to do that as well. So let me disable the auto rotation, long hold on the screen, choose the home settings. And what we're looking for is the setting at the bottom, which basically says allow the rotation to happen for the home screen. So let's enable that. And now, once I turn the screen, nothing still happens, but there's a little icon on the right hand side. Tap on that. And now it just basically turns everything. Now what's cool is when you turn it back to portrait, it doesn't automatically turn it. You've actually got to press that icon as well. So you are always in charge and in control. Right, let's check out the awesome, awesome, awesome fingerprint scanner on the Google Pixel 3a. Love this, it works every single time. So going to settings, going to security, here's obviously where you add your fingerprints. A cool little trick is the fingerprints that you've already added. Simply tap on the back and it will tell you which finger this is. So here's my left hand, this is my right hand. Simply tap on it and you'll see it'll highlight it. There we go. Now, another cool little hack to get even better reading in case you still not think it's fast enough, click on add finger. And this time, add not just one finger, but basically you're gonna alternate left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, so essentially you're trying to almost hack this kind of fingerprint thing. I don't know what it does to security, but it just makes it a lot easier, a lot smoother to open it. Now, other manufacturers have had a real issue with fingerprint scanners. So you, you had to do that. For this, you actually don't, but there it is in case you do want to have even faster response. Controlling the notification and swipe down from the top can be done using the fingerprint 
scanner at the back. Like I'm doing now, pull down once and then pull down twice, goes into the expanded menu. You gotta set that up first. So go into your device settings. And this time we're gonna look up for swipe fingerprint. Find that, tap on that to enable it. And then make sure it's enabled, the little blue button. There we go, check it. And now you can control everything when you swipe down on your fingerprint scanner at the back. So we all know that we should be using our phones less and less and less, but we sometimes we need a bit of help. So go into settings, look into the digital well-being, fire up that application, and it will tell you how many hours you've been on your phone and which apps you've actually been using today. If you don't want to do that, three little dots at the top, you can actually turn this off altogether. Kind of defeating the purpose though. Right, but now we want to get into bed. So it's time to wind down. Once you enable this feature at a certain start time and a certain end time, look what it will do. It will change the screen to grayscale and it will put the do not disturb button on there. Let me show you what that looks like. So there we go, start. See how my phone is? It just doesn't look appealing anymore. There's no color. Even if I open up an app, everything still works. It just doesn't look appealing. It looks pretty miserable and it does work. It actually makes you want to put your phone down. You check what you need to and then you let it go. If you want to undo this, there's your notification. Pull down from the top, notification. Disable that, tap. Take you straight to that screen and then just disable that. And then your beautiful phone is back to its glory days. Now, since we're still on this particular screen, click on dashboard and let's just say there's a certain application that you want to have a timeout. You can actually set a timer for each individual application, how many hours it allows to be on, how many minutes per day, and it will reset every 24 hours. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's go into Twitter. I think it said I've been on there for 20 minutes. I set it for 15 to lock it. Click OK. There we go. So now it should tell me that I cannot use Twitter. Where's Twitter? There we go. Twitter is gray. When I touch on it, it says the app isn't available. It puts my app in timeout. And of course, if I change my mind, I can always go back into the settings and delete that. Now everything should be back to normal. There we go. Well, if you still cannot get rid of your phone and get rid of that digital habit, at the very least, enable Nightlight. Takes away that blue tinge. You can see I can manually enable it or disable it or use it on a schedule from sunrise to sunset. Just saves your eyes. Right, let's look at the Active Edge on the Google Pixel 3a. So go into Settings, search for Active Edge. And essentially, that's the ability to squeeze your phone at the bottom and it will fire off their Google Assistant. Here's where you set the sensitivity, so how hard you gotta squeeze it for it to activate. A feature which people seem to miss is at the bottom, you've got the ability to squeeze and get rid of things like alarms, notifications, so you're holding the phone, you might as well squeeze it. All right, let's fire up some apps. So here is my Instagram, let's fire up Twitter. And now in the olden days to go between the two apps, you simply double tap the home button. Clearly that's not working here. What you do is you gotta swipe to the right simple swipe it will go between the last two apps if you long hold it and swipe it it's a little slider you can stop at any of the application that you've recently used since there's no external micro sd card on the google pixel 3a there's no slot for it we've got to kind of keep an eye on our storage so under settings go into storage and you want to enable something called smart storage just helps you manage your applications and your data better now you can actually clean up and it will look for your infrequently used applications. The one at the bottom, I've just cleaned mine up and obviously then I have nothing in there. So kind of, if you want to uninstall any of those apps, now would be a good time to do that. What else can you do? It breaks everything down into categories. You tap on it, it opens up each individual application and it will tell you how much storage each one uses. So a very good way to start cleaning up when you need to. Right, let's enable the dark theme or the light theme or the one based on wallpaper. Let me show you what I mean. Go into settings, search for display. And when you see at the bottom, it's something called device theme. And this time enable the dark mode. There we go, that's a dark theme. You can see the menus are all dark. I don't like that because when I'm filming, it reflects the camera. So I go into light and when I swipe down, you can see it's all light. They can also set it on based on your wallpaper. If you got a dark theme wallpaper, it brings you the dark theme. So that's actually quite a cool little touch. I normally have it on dark just for filming. I have it on light. Now, speaking of wallpaper, what you can do is also select a daily wallpaper option as well. So 
choose wallpaper from the screen. Here it gives you a whole host of wallpapers to choose from from various categories. Choose the one that you want and you can enable that. Alternatively, what you can do is say, look, I don't like these and I want these constantly to change. There's an option at the top which will download a new wallpaper and it will simply install it and set it up for you on a daily basis. So you can say set wallpaper and you can say I want it on my home screen and the lock screen or just the home screen. And there we go and every day this will actually change. So two little Easter eggs are actually baked into the operating system. Go into settings, go down to the bottom where it says about phone and then choose the Android. Now when it comes up, tap on Android multiple times and it will open up this little Android Pie thing. But if you tap on it multiple times again, it opens up this cool little notepad. Now it's very, very limited what you can do. Select a couple of colors, the thickness of the brush. Not really, really much that you can do. I'm not sure how useful this is. But for example, oh, hold on, let's choose not white. There we go, so let's choose pink and let's write something on the screen. So there we go, sub question mark and a smiley face. So a cool little Easter egg that you can kind of have fun and play with. Again, not sure how useful that was, but it's there. So what settings did I miss? What features should I have been looking at? Let me know in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If it's your first time here, welcome. This is what we do on this channel. Apps, gadget, tips and tricks, phones, how to, all that cool stuff. Hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of these other cool videos down here and I'll see you over there.